Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me for this Metadata Matters quick tip video on customizing our IPTC editor dialogues in Photo Mechanic. Quick tip videos are single topic videos and they're intended to be easily findable in the search function of YouTube or Google. Some, I admit, will be quicker than others. So let's dive in here. In the olden days, it was pretty easy to present IPTC fields in an editor dialog, Photo Mechanic or any other program that worked with them. You could present the entire IPTC standard on one page. Now, the IPTC standard has grown up. There are twice as many fields in the core standard, and we now have extended fields as well. So that one page idea just doesn't work anymore. And now we have this scrolling dialogue, and it scrolls, and it scrolls, and it scrolls. And the order in which these fields are presented by default in this dialogue must perfectly match somebody's workflow somewhere. If you know that person, please let me know. Doesn't match mine, probably doesn't match yours. As you can see when I scroll down, in order to get to the title object name field and the special instructions field, I had to scroll halfway down this thing. Now, if you're working on your own work and you're marking up metadata, and if the object name field is in your workflow, it's probably going to be the second or third thing you have to touch on every single picture you output. If you're working with other people's work, the special instructions field could be critically important because it's going to have rights warnings and embargoes and things like that in it. So wouldn't it be nice if we could take those fields, or whichever one we want, and move them wherever we want. We could move them up to the top of this stack here where we can easily see them and easily tab to them while we're captioning our pictures. Turns out, yes, we can do that. Let's go do it. We go over here to Preferences in Photo Mechanic, and we go to the Accessibility page of our Preferences dialog, and we have buttons for Customizing IPTC Info and Customizing IPTC Stationery. And what these do is they allow us to configure the IPTC Editor dialog and the Stationery Pad dialog, respectively. So we'll just click this one that takes us into the editor for the IPTC Editor dialog. And the first thing that we want to do here is we'll go down here to the left, and there's a snapshot button, just like you have in the regular parts of the interface in Photo Mechanic. Here in the preferences, in this particular dialog anyway, we have the ability to do snapshots. So let's just save, whoops, let's just save the default setting as a snapshot, and that way we can quickly refer back to it. And yeah, overwrite it, go ahead. Now, there is a restore defaults button in this dialog, but I prefer just doing this with a snapshot. And this is going to be a cut and fit kind of operation, so you'll probably go back and forth between the default and whatever configuration you're working on at the moment, or maybe two or three of them, many times before you get them just the way you want them. Now, let's look at what we can do in this dialog. First column, we have a list of every field in the dialog, including the labels. These are the bars that denote the different sections in the actual dialog itself. Next column over, we have the label as presented in Photo Mechanic for each one of these things. And if we double click here, we can edit that label just like we were editing a file name in our operating system. Next over, we have a column where we can choose the number of rows for each field. We can make the field taller or shorter. As you can see, I've chosen eight rows here for my caption. You can go all the way up to 25 if you are feeling incredibly verbose about writing your captions. Next up, we have a column where we can enable, or by extension, disable any field in the photo mechanic interface. I'll come back to that in just one second. The final row is visibility. If it's ticked, the field is visible. If it's unticked, the field disappears out of the photo mechanic interface altogether. 
So in theory, you could strip down your editor dialog to where it wouldn't scroll at all. It would only show a few fields. Now, let's go back to enabling and disabling the fields. 99% of us, make that 99.9% .9 of us, will probably never want to disable a field. What disabling a field does in Photo Mechanic is it doesn't just make the field disappear from the interface. It makes Photo Mechanic, if it finds information in that field, clear it. In other words, if you open a picture and it has information in a disabled field, as soon as you OK your edits to that picture, Photo Mechanic will delete all the information in any disabled field. Now that flies in the face of the generally held best practice of never wanting to destroy data. But I could see perhaps in a corporate environment, say, if you had compliance issues or quality control issues about your product that you're outputting, you might want to make sure that you only had certain metadata fields and that you didn't have any others, and you might want to use this. And indeed, all the big media corporations are photo mechanic customers. So there it is. My advice is don't ever disable a field. Now, you can grab a field in here, and you can just drag it up and down. And the same thing is true with these section headers. And down at the bottom, if you need more section headers, you can just grab one and drag it up to wherever you want it to be. And on top of that, you can use your control or your command keys, and you can multiply select groups of fields and drag them up and down. And that will be a tremendous sanity saver when you actually go to use this thing, because you may want to move a whole section up or down, and it's really sort of tedious doing it one field at a time. When you get your configuration the way you want it or the way you think you want it, you can just OK it and OK out of the Preferences dialog and go back and take a look at it. And we've made pretty much of a mess of that, so we don't want to save that one. But when we do want to save what we've done, we go back in the Preferences dialog, we go back to the snapshot function down at the corner, and we simply save out our dialog as whatever we want it to be. Or we can select here and I just selected my default configuration that I use for my own IPTC editor. And we'll pop back over here and see how that looks. And it took me several tries to get something that was fairly reasonable for my needs. And I just went back and I did it over and over again. Now, some of us will be customizing this dialogue primarily or almost exclusively with the intention of working with our own pictures. We're going to be marking them up with metadata. So we're going to put the fields that we touch every time at the top. For most of us, another 99%er case, the first field up is going to be the caption. Thereafter, it's anybody's guess. Now, in Photo Mechanic, by the by, you can tab from field to field in the interface. So it's pretty logical that you might want to write out your caption and you might want to tab to the next field that you're going to use, whether it's the title, object name, or something else, or the keywords, and take care of business and move on. The fields that are in your template that you never touch, like this copyright field here, is probably going to change very, very rarely, and your contact information will change even more rarely than that, can be just pushed down out of the way so that you don't have to look at them. Now, mind you, if you are working on other people's work, your priorities are different, and perhaps a little bit backwards. First place you want to look on probably any picture is going to be the caption, obviously. So the caption goes on top, regardless. But then after that, there are other considerations. The copyright notice is tremendously important and probably something you want to look at right off the bat. Special instructions, ditto. There could be a lot of information in there that you need to know about a picture that you're going to use. For your own pictures, if you use a special instructions field at all, the chances are 9 out of 10, it's templated, and you don't have to look at it every time. So you might even want to make a couple of different configurations to cover different needs at different times. I chose to make a one-size-fits-all sort of thing 
that just works pretty well whenever I use it. And as you can see, my contact information is further down. I never have to look at it in my own work because it's always the same. And when I'm working with other people's work, sometimes I need to contact the photographer, but it just doesn't really happen all that often. And as you can see here, I put in a separator bar for seldom used IPTC fields. And I put a bunch of fields that are, are just either rarely ever used or are even deprecated now at the moment under that bar. And then below that, I took whole sections of fields that I just rarely use, and you probably will rarely use them too. Locations taken and shown might be a big thing someday, but not now. I did another separator bar for the extended part of the IPTC metadata standard. And I put those fields, the fields about models, the fields about licensing, the administrative fields about media, and so forth, way down at the bottom. So I can do most everything that I need to do with my own photos without scrolling at all, and pretty much everything I need to do when I'm working with other people's photos with just a little bit of scrolling. So, okay, let's dismiss that, and we'll go back again. First, let's stop just for a second and route here and look at the stationary pad. The stationary pad is laid out differently. It is two columns wide. So that means that we can approach our configuration for it a little bit differently. I originally thought that I would maybe just replicate exactly what I had done in the IPTC editor in the stationary pad, but that kind of makes no sense at all because with two columns, I can have just about anything I might ever need down to and including contact information above the fold, so to speak. And if we scroll down just a little here, and normally I would not have to scroll down, but my video capture software constrains the depth of these dialogues. And I just put in two of these bars, one on each side, and put all my seldom used fields down below. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that I went back quite a few times and moved groups of fields from one side to the other until I got my two columns to be about the same depth. Now, honestly, if you're just storing fields that you don't need at the bottom, it kind of doesn't matter, but neatness counts, so I just figured I would do that. Also, fields that you don't really need, that you never use, you could conceivably just turn off. Well, let's pop over, and we'll go back to Configuration, in Preferences, then to Accessibility, and we'll press the button that customizes the stationary field. We have the same deal here. We have the snapshot function at the bottom. Once again, I recommend saving the default, particularly in this field, because you're not going to get it the way you want the first time. And you might also want to have different configurations available. These things work exactly the same way. And yes, significantly, you can take fields or groups of fields, and you can drag them from the top part of the dialog, which is the left-hand column in the stationary pad, to the bottom part of the dialog, which is the right-hand column, and vice versa. So it'll take a couple of cuts and tries, but eventually you'll get the fields where you want them. And when you do that, go back, save it out as a snapshot, and you're going to be good to go. Now, if we go back to our accessibility field, we'll see something else. Here we have font scale for the IPTC caption field. And as you can see, in my case, I've set mine to 130%. You can go all the way up to 200% if you want. And just for the sake of illustration, we'll go ahead and do that. And here we have some really, really large type in our caption field. If you ever watch professional copy editors work, you'll see they very often blow the type up on their displays. And truly, that does make it easier to edit and find typos, and just even to write, particularly if you're working on a laptop under rough circumstances. So let's set that back where it's right for my configuration, and we can OK it, and that'll be fine. Now, there's a tick box item in this dialog that looks kind of intriguing. Use the classic IPTC dialog. What this tick box will do 
is it reverts photomechanic back to the old school one pane shows everything IPTC dialog. We'll just take a look here. You get this. I was actually tempted to go ahead and use this for day-to-day -day work. I reasoned that the fields that were in my template, I really didn't need to see. And this thing gave me an instant snapshot view of my fields. Mind you, in practical terms, it isn't any better than what I have now in the generally much nicer new dialog. And another reason not to do this is that some of these fields that are shown here, the category, the subcat, and all that, that's deprecated. Who uses edit status? And what the heck is urgency all about? So this dialogue might not be as attractive as it looks just on the face of it. The big thing about this is that any fields that aren't shown in this pane are disabled if you use this pane. So Photo Mechanic, upon okaying any edit to any metadata, will delete any metadata that is not in these fields. So my idea about just not seeing my templated metadata was completely wrong. Not only would I not see it, I would be deleting it. So that's a no-no. That's for nostalgia as far as I'm concerned right now. And we don't want to go there unless we are working in a particular corporate environment that requires it. So let's make sure that's unchecked. We'll make sure that I set my IPTC caption field font setting back to where I want it to be. And we will just OK that and go along our way. So there you have it, a big modern annoyance that you can just brush off the table with a little bit of work in the preferences in Photo Mechanic. Thanks for watching this quick tip video. It turns out that the like button in YouTube makes videos easier to find in searches. And that's kind of the point of this series of videos. So if you like this video, if it was helpful to you, please go ahead and click that button. And as always, reach out in the comments below, on the blog, or on social media, and let me know what you would like to see from these videos going forward. Until next time, mind your metadata.